then shall he also him be manifested in glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I think one of the most important subjects to preach is about love. Because talking about love is so difficult. People mostly turn their mind to neutral when it's being discussed. Because they have asked so much. But love is a commandment from God. God commands it. It's one of the Ten Commandments. So when you say, oh, I'm keeping up, I can't, I didn't kill, I didn't steal, or if you don't have love, you are disobeying God. If you go to Leviticus 19, 18, Leviticus 19, 18, please. Leviticus is in the Old Testament. Thou shalt not take vengeance. Yeah. Thou shalt not take vengeance, mm -hmm. nor bear any grudge mm -hmm. against the children of thy people. God thou shalt love thy neighbor as themselves. I am Jehovah. You see, it's a commandment. He said he is Jehovah. Thou shalt love your neighbors as yourself. Love is an important subject to Christian. When Jesus was asked, what is the most important commandment? He responded, Love your Lord with all, love your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind and strength. And the second is like, Love your neighbor as yourself. You understand? God has said it in Leviticus. Jesus Christ is God. He came to the world as a representative of God Himself. And he said the same too. He said, love your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. Everything about God is love. Because God himself is love. If we love each other, you might be wondering, oh, of course I love my neighbor. Of course I love. By the time I go into the Bible, you will understand what actually love means. John, John tells us the truth measure of whether we love God or not is shown in how we love our brothers. If you say you love God, some people say, oh, I love God. I come to church. I praise Him. I do this. I do that. It's all about God. But you did not love your neighbor. How can somebody who does not, he said, and over all these virtues, put on love. That is what Apostle Paul tells us. He says, put on love. Because love is the one that binds all everything, all the virtues together. If you, if you can prophesy, if you can dream dreams, if you have visions, and you don't have love, it's nothing. He said, how are you to know others? You know some people in church, they, they can sing, they have so many talent, they can see visions, they can dream dreams, they are always there worshiping God, doing this. How do God know you? Are you just coming to church to praise Him, to sit down, to receive what you are going to receive? You are a prayer warrior. Oh, I am wonderful in singing. I can tell what will happen tomorrow. What God is asking you today is, do you love? Do you love? Love is the chief virtue. An active member in church, maybe people know you for the gift that you have. Maybe you are known as a person that has a beautiful voice or uncommon wisdom. God is asking you today, do you love? Paul was talking to the Corinthians. He was talking about love. He wasn't talking about marriages. He was talking about their relationship with each other. He said, if if I speak in tongues of men and of angels, but I have not love, I am only a resounding God. If I have a gift of prophecy and can fathom all mystery and not all knowledge, and if I have faith that can move mountains, but have not love, I am not. If I give all I possess to the poor and surrender my body to the flame, but have not love, that is 1 Corinthians 13, 1 to 3 that I'm reading. Do you see that love characterizes 
the children of God. If you have love, then you are a Christian. If you have love, then you are obeying God. Then you might be asking me, what is this love? If you go with me to 1 Corinthians 13, verse 4. I'll start from 4. I'm going to analyze that. Then you will understand what love is all about. Love suffers long. Love suffers long. Some people will say long suffering. Love has patience. You said you love your neighbor and you do not have patience with them. I want to ask you, do you even have patience with your children? They will be talking to you and say, oh, leave me, I'm so busy. Your husband might be saying, oh, when you go to place of, what I'm saying is, love we are in is a commandment. We can do it. If you go to one place and your, and your boss says, Oh, can you make me a cup of coffee? Say, Oh, yes, I can do it. Yes, how do we want it? But if you go home and your husband said, Oh, darling, can you make a cup of coffee? Can you make it yourself? Don't bother me. You can't be bothered. Don't you see that I'm tired? We don't have patience. But you know that you can do it when you want to do it. So love is something that we know to, we have to put it on. It's not, some, it's not a choice. It's not a feeling. It's not only when you feel like loving that you love. You love because it's a commandment. And love, you have to have patience, not suffering. If somebody offends you, don't say, oh, he offended me yesterday. I forgive that person. He offends me again. I'm not going to forgive. No, that is not love. Love is long suffering. You continue to love. It's long. You continue to endure. Because I love you, I will forgive you. And love is kind. Love is kind. You are kind to people. You don't just see them and just ignore them and say, oh, who are you? You don't, or you won't, you don't even want to know. They can, you know, when you love somebody, you help them. Because love is kind. You don't help them because of what you want them to give unto you. But you love them because God commanded it. We have to have it at the back of our mind. That love is not about how I feel. But because God says, I should love. I'm loving this person. You be kind to people. Yo, oh, oh, how are you? Oh, God bless you. Well done. Encourage each other. Be kind. Don't look at, don't say, oh, this person, I don't like the way the person treats me. No. Whenever you are thinking of that, just remember, it's God's commandments. When you glorify God, he will glorify you. And when he glorifies you, things start to happen in your life. Doors have been opened. Because you are doing it because you have to do it because you don't have choice. Love is kind. Furthermore, I said, love does not end you. Love does not end you. You don't have to say, I want to be, I want to have, start, I want to be more than this person. This person can sing, I want to speak, sing more than that person. This person is beautiful, I'll make myself more beautiful. This one is rich, he has the best car. The next car I'm going to buy is going to be made. Oh, you envy that person. You want to outstand that person. You want to, no, love does not envy. Love edifies. If you see something good happening to somebody, you appreciate it. You encourage that person. When God sees what is in your heart, he will do something better for you. It's not about what everybody, just like the, 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 the parable of the talents. God gave different one, three, five. Whatever God gives you, he knows you can manage it. What you have to do, work on what you've got. Don't envy your neighbor. Enviness is of devil. Enviness is of the evil. Remove enviness. Appreciate each other. God will help us. I'm not only preaching to everybody. I'm learning too from it. I learned that love is not something that if I feel like it's when I'll have to love that person. No. You don't give out to people because you want them in return. You can even pray be blessing somebody you might not appreciate it. That don't even mind that. When I, oh, I bless this person. I was there for this person. Now, he doesn't want to know me. Don't worry. You are not doing it for that one. You are doing it because God has said people around you should have an influence in their life. 
You are doing it because it's what God wants you to do. Because you never know when God will, will reward you for that little thing you have been doing. So keep on doing. Keep on being kind. Appreciate. Be patient to each other. He says, love does not parade himself. Arrogance. Pride. Love does not give that. Love does not want to have it his own way. If it's not my way, then it can't be done. If I do, this is what I want. If you don't want to do it, tough. That is not love. That is of the devil. Love does not parade himself. Love is humility. Love is meekness. Because Christ received the characteristic of Christ. It's, 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 very, it's, it's very gentle and meek. Oh, Jesus Christ can just call on the thunder and strike every one of them that want to crucify him. But when you are when when you don't parade yourself, you have meekness. Meekness does not mean foolishness. It means you are able to control your strengths. You able openness to, to be able to control strengths. But if you want to parade, you those people that are very arrogant and pride, they are the empty ones. If you see somebody that is so filled with the Holy Spirit, and if you see somebody that is even rich physically, I mean materially, they don't blow their whistle. They don't blow their whistle. And that is why they have more. You can never see an arrogant person that progress. It's never, it's not, it's never like that. So I encourage all of us, Father, I encourage every one of us to pray for this. Father, give me that spirit of meekness. Let me be humble. Let me be like Christ. Because if you want to know what is love, See all the characteristics of Christ since he started his ministry. You will find all these things there. Love does not puff off. It's the same thing. It does not show off. When they enter a place, they want to make sure that, oh, they see me. Oh, they go green. Apparent. No. Oh, that person saw me in church. She just passed. She didn't even say hello. Who did she think she is? You, might, you don't even know what that person is going through. That person might even be thinking of something else and you know, make excuses for people. Make excuses and say, oh, probably. Oh, I wonder what is wrong with this sister or brother. Don't see that they, have, they don't want to greet you. Be there for each other. Don't puff off. Um, do, love does not behave with you. Hmm. When I, read, when I read this, I said, oh my God, help me. Because at times, I know the same thing with you. You don't want to stand around people that are very rude. Some people are so rude. But when I learned this, I said, oh, even when they are rude, I don't really want to see that, Lord. Help me. But children of God, let us not be rude. Let us be polite. Goodness brings the spirits down. If I come to you, I talk, at times I want to talk to you. But because I don't know what you well, at times, I don't know when, 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 what time I will say we make you angry. And I'll just say, oh, let me just stay away. They are very rude. Some people, they just have that character, but love does not rude. If any of us has that, let us remember today and say, no. Father, help me. Take away this. I want to obey you. I don't want to be a rude person. The Lord will help us. Amen. Sorry, I'm looking at the next one. Love does not behave. Love does not see his own. He does not provoke. Love is not selfish. When you love, you are never selfish. You think about others first. Even when you are hungry and somebody comes to you, no matter how little you have, remember to share it with that person. It's good to share. It's good to seek out for others. It's good for us to love one another and appreciate each other. Love does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoice in the truth. Love forgives. Because if, if you love someone, even if that person offends you hundred times in a day, you say, I love you and I forgive you. What love wipes away iniquities, multitudes of sin. 
Our children, even one of them said is their verses. That is law. And he said, I'm going to give you a practical. I am patient with you because I love you. And I want to forgive you. No matter what you do for me, I love you. I want to forgive you. I am kind to you because I love you and I want to help you. I do not envy your possession or your gifts because I love you and I want you to have the best. I do not boast about my attainments because I love you and I want to hear about yours. I am not proud because I love you and I want to esteem you for myself. I am not rude because I love you and I care about your feelings. I am not self-seeking because I love you and I want to meet your needs. I am not angry because I love you and I want to overlook your offenses. I do not record your wrongs because I love you. Love covers a multitude of sins. First Peter 4. I think it is easy to establish that love is supposed to be the predominant character of a Christian. We have to develop this love. It's not natural for you to just be in love, to say that I love somebody. You work on it. It's not something that comes easily. The flesh, your environment will not allow you to do it. But if you surrender yourself to God and say, God, I'm putting on that love that you asked me to put on. When God asks you to do something, he will give you the way without to do it if he asks for it. He said, whatever you ask according to my will, he said, I will do it for you. So it's not difficult to love. Once you know each morning, just like you went to your wardrobe and you put on a nice clothes, every morning, every time, go and put on, put on that garment of love. And say, Father, today I release myself unto you. I want to go out there and obey you. I want to be like Christ. I want to bring people into Christ. When you love, you bring people into the kingdom of God. We must not compare ourselves. When you love, you do not compare yourself with anybody. Every, God does not deal with standards. You have to be patient and be kind. You don't envy. Accept people as they are. When you love people, you accept them with whatever where they are. You don't expect everybody to have the same character as you. You don't expect everybody to have the same experience as you. You you love from where you find them. You what I mean is, if the person is a rude person, accept that person. When you are patient with that person, if you are loving, if you encourage that person, you like Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ with the, the fishermen. You can the, the, the matter that becomes one of the uh, yeah, the side, I mean, one of those people that preached the gospel. She was an anonymous. Remember that lady that they wanted to stone? Remember that lady by the well? Jesus Christ did not say, oh, these ones are not holy. He met them the way they are, and from there, he encouraged them, he understand their language, he changed them, cleansed them, and make them holy. You can do the same, because that is what Christ is saying. We are his apostle. he has sent us out to do it. Don't, don't judge people. Don't judge to people, but accept them for who they are. Encourage them. Do whatever you can do in their life. Let love reign in this ministry. You understand? It's not just like say, oh, I love you with the love of Christ. No, it's not by mouth. Oh. Love is practical. It's not to say, oh, I love you. And you say, who cares? Who love you? Who, 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 love of God. That one. It's evil. There's no one God that I don't change. God's change was to Paul. Did not abandon him. Let us not abandon each other. Forget about who has betrayed us. Forget about who has hurt us. Let's forget of what others have done. Let's move on from here and love and forgive. Let us stand together. When, when we are in unity, when we wear that garment of love, when we put it on, like Apostle Paul says, people out there will come to Christ. They will appreciate Christ in us. By then, we'll be able to, not that we'll be taking uh, tracks. They know you're a very good person. You are very envious. Then you are giving me tracks. Well, Jesus loves you. You say, oh, if that is how your Jesus loves, you can take your track. But if that person, that is not only in church that we, even outside, in, 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 our, in our businesses, in our in, in our home, in, in our workplace, let us put on that garment of love. 
Let them see the difference in our life. The Lord will help us. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. When we love, we overlook small irritation. We because some people are very irritating. They are very irritating. They are just agents of the city. But when the light comes, darkness disappeared. Amen. So you don't allow people who irritate you and say, oh, I can't stand this person. No. If you start to look for the problem in people's life, you will always find it. You will always find it. But it's always good to look for the potential in people. When you relate to people, don't look at the problem. You will always have the faults. Because we are flesh. We are flesh. That takes me to an Hebrew woman. You know the Jews? They know the God they serve. When they, they think they are, all their children are genius. Their mothers, they think their children are genius. So if they come back with bad reports, ah, they will say, maybe it's a teacher that cannot deal with the genius in my son or in my child. You understand? They don't see the problem in people. They see the potentials. Let us look at that in this ministry. Then we can not, don't let us look at the problem in people's life because you will always find it. Don't get irritated. Embrace people for who they are. Because if you say you love God and you do not love your neighbor that you see, how can you truly say you love God? When you could not love somebody that God created. So a little to anything, anybody that irritates us, whether in church, whether at home, whether at work, remember this sermon. And just say, God, help me. Give me the strength to overlook the Lord will bless us. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Love means diligently rooting out on loving behavior in our lives. Love is important. We also need to realize that the devil and our sinful nature will quickly get our track. We do not love naturally. Always be on the guard. When you think, when you start to see the boss in people's life, oh, that one, I love that person, but, but, mm, mm, but mm, I can't stand that person. Be on the guard. That is the devil that is talking. That is not God. Everything that is sinful in our life, let us be careful of it. Love brings all the, is the, is the ultimate of all the virtue. When you love, I tell you, you practice it. Try to practice it for one week. And I know after that one week, it becomes an habit. Each time you want to derail, remember that it's God's obedience. I'm not loving you because I want to, but because I want to obey God, I'm trying. Oh, this person is talking about me. They told me about it. Ah, today I'm going to. Ah, no, no. They remember, Father. I need to forgive. I need to let go. And God will help us. He said, everything that will ask according to His will, He said He will answer us. His will is for us to love one another. He will help us. Then we are no more of the flesh. We become so spiritual. Things become so easy for us. We, be, we, have, we, we, we have that peace of mind. Peace of mind will reign in one's life. Because you, you don't have any grudge against anybody. You don't care. When you are not doing, when you are doing that, the angels of God are fighting on your behalf. Don't think that, oh, they will take me for granted. No. Because you are obeying God, he has assigned some soldiers beside you that you cannot see. He has assigned some angels of God to defend you. Because he know out there, you know when Jesus Christ sent for his disciples, he did not, he did not take anything. He said, go. And they never lack anything. Because they are doing his will. If you go out there, and you, are, you don't envy anybody, you are not jealous, you are not proud, you are looking out to help others. Because whatever God gives you, there's a purpose why he gives you. He gives you so that you can help others. It doesn't matter how many people you have helped. It, it not, what matters to God is how many people you have touched their lives. Genuinely. How many people through your love have turned to Christ? 
Love brings Christianity, make us to unite. It breaks down the wall of this unity. Because, oh, uh, this one is uh, Ladura. This one is Celestia. We are, oh, no, no, no. This one is uh, Redeem. Ah, uh, this is Fountain of Life. Love does not see that. There's no competition in love. We embrace each other. We encourage each other. Anytime you are, your mind is set on competition, know that that is not of God. Your, our aim, our goal should not be how to be, be better than someone, but how to better ourselves. God will help us to do that. Amen. An envious Christian, a malicious Christian, a cold as a Christian is the greatest of Trinity and contradiction. It's not of Christ. It is like talking about dark brightness or a false truth. Love does not come naturally. We must focus on love. We must remind ourselves over and over, day in, day out, that love is the characteristic that defines our relationship with others. When we see your loving feeling begin to creep in, we must stand against it. When you see that you don't want to love this person, oh, I cannot stand this person. Oh, I wish when I come to church, this person is not there. Oh, I wish this person would not even talk in church today. That is not of God. It's of, it's of the devil. You will say, no, get deep behind me, Satan. Get deep behind me, Satan. If we can practice all these that I've said, oh, well, the easiest thing now to do is to say, oh, yes, they are talking about somebody. I know. I can see that thing, that that person is very rude. Oh, that person did not even love me. But that is not about what we want to say today. It's not about judging others. We need to look inside ourselves today. Are we rude? Are we envious? Don't, don't worry about what people have done to you. It's not about anybody now, it's about us. Look inside you. Am I patient? Am I forgiving? Have I ever touched somebody's life? Have I been there for us? Because human flesh is like this. Today they will say, oh, it's the most, oh, I love that person. It's the, it's the, I can't do with that person. Tomorrow they will say, who cares? They will say hallelujah today. Crucify him tomorrow. Are you there when your friend is falling? Are you there to uphold your friend? Or you want to keep that friend and say to hell with you. I thought you are, you are a good person. Oh, I didn't know it's rubbish. Are you looking out for that? We should be there to pick each other's up. We should be there to encourage each other. Not looking out for the faults. So let us look inside ourselves today. Don't care about whether so, oh, they are talking about that person. It's not very loving. He doesn't love me. But do you love? That's what God is saying. Are you putting on that garment of love? Are you putting it on? Are you rude? Are you selfish? Self-centered. All you want is me, 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 me. If it's not my way, then it's not rubbish. Let us think deep. And from now on, let us put on that love. Practice it for a week. Then it becomes an habit. You've known when you are going wrong. You know when the Satan is talking to you. Remember, it's not a feeling. Love is not how you feel. Whether you feel it or you don't feel it, it's a must. You have to do it. Because what God commands it. He said, thou shalt not kill. If you cannot kill, and you can discipline yourself not to kill, I think it's also good to discipline yourself to love. Because love is the chief virtue. The Lord will help us. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. How will you, how will others describe your attitude towards them? After you have listened to my sermon, how will, do you think others will describe you? A loving person? A very harsh person? An angry person? indifferently loving. There are some people they don't even want to care. They don't want to love. They don't want to envy. They just want to be on their own. No. Must, you must love. 
Because somebody will say, oh, well, I don't care whether you buy that car or not. I don't care whether it's down or not. Search your mind. Go home and read 1 Corinthians 13 from 14. Evaluate it and see where you are. With God, all things are possible. If we can do that in this ministry, the ministry will move forward. It's not about numbers. It's about who, at the end of it, we make heaven. There might be churches that will be millions. And there might not be one that will make heaven. The Lord will not make our house like that. But it might be few and be in fire for Christ. And reach out out there. And when you speak, people will know this is from God. So don't look at, oh, until we are, we are hundreds, we are millions, that things can happen. We can make a difference. We can touch the world. We can change the situation. I pray today that God will touch us and make us do that. Take time to learn something about someone today. Not by talking about them, but by talking with them. Every one of us wants to be loved. We want to be part of what the Bible says the church is. But if that is to happen, we must recognize that we each have a responsibility to put on love in our lives. Make a difference from now. We are going to the Chinese. Talk to somebody. Find out something about them. Talk with them, encourage them. Love them with the love of Christ. When we meet again on Tuesday, tell somebody about your experience, what, you have, what the life-changing experience you have read, what God has done in your life. On Wednesday, you say, you know what, this is my experience. Yeah. Let us practicalize it.
Father, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. I give you glory, I give you honor, I give you adoration. Hallelujah. Thank you for your word that you have sent for us. The chief of all the virtues, which is the law. Father, I pray in the mighty name of Jesus that because we have tasked the old law for this law, O Lord. Because you commanded it. Give us the will, Father, Lord, and the will with us to be able to carry your command out, O Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Let there be a difference from now on in our lives in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, Lord, I thank you. Father, Lord, our job, Father, Lord, is to say the words. Father, your job is to walk in us. Let us walk in love, O Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Because this is gifts of the Spirit. Father, Lord, that means you are the fruits of the Spirit. Father, let that fruits come out of us, O Lord, and bear more fruits in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And render your children unto their holy hands. Father, Lord, even though we live in the world, we do not belong to the world. Father, guide us generously, O Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Let no trouble, let no evil come to any of any of us, O Lord, in the mighty Amen. name of Jesus Christ. Father, Lord, I pray in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. That, Father, the ultimate which shall all make heaven. Amen. To the glory of your holy name. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord.